Welcome back, guys, here with Froden. Day number two of the Curse Trials. We got Saviz vs. Kalento coming up for you guys. Um, what we've seen so far is a lot of Druid domination. Shaman going there a little bit. We've seen uh, Trump's Warlock has been a pretty impressive deck so far. And uh, Kalento's bringing in Hunter. And you'd think Hunter might be pretty common, but Hunter does lose a lot. I think this is actually the first time we are seeing Hunter. I believe he might be the only Hunter in the whole tournament. Now that I look at the list, that is in fact the case. So, you know, wh why is Hunter at such a loss in this, like, uh, you know, mock standard format like we, we lose mad scientists but is that really the end of hunter like people were playing hunter you know before yeah. these expansions came out yeah in fact they, it got even a little bit better right instead of wolf riders they're using argent horse riders so mm -hmm. even the face hunter list was starting to get more refined um and more powerful uh they can even mix and match how they do secrets so it's not necessarily snake it's not even like explosive trap and snake traps even bad uh you know you can kind of continue to put these mind games up uh, and you still keep some of the best cards. If you, I don't know if Kalento's even playing mid-range Hunter. We, we, we went to Face Hunter as an immediate assumption, just because mm -hmm. uh, Face Hunter gets, quote, better with the Sludge Belcher and the Zombie Chows and the Haunted Creeper's all gone. Um, but maybe the mid-range Hunter still has some viability, too. And if there's a person that I would anticipate being able to show us the way, Crip, it would be uh, Mr. Alexander Mulch himself. Kalento is a guy that was one of the first people to put mid-range Hunter on the map. Him and Life Coach uh, worked on the list. Uh, Kalento even credits Gara for helping a lot, and those are three very prominent mid-range Hunter players for a long mm -hmm. time. Um, so I, I'd be really impressed if Kalento was able to whip out a list that really excites us here. And it's really funny, right? What a time to be alive, Crip, where we're like, oh, <laughs> yes, the Hunter! Hunter. Um, well, I, I, I think I think that's 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 a good way to put it. But the exciting cards that Hunter has are just really cool cards right now. I mean, I think it is going to be a mid-range Hunter, but you know, we could be totally wrong about that. Uh, the reason I think it's going to be a mid-range Hunter is because a lot of the old-school tools are still like super powerful, like just Kill Command, Animal Companion. Uh, you still have your Quick Shots. You uh, you have your High Mains. You have your Hound Masters. So you know the yeah. the core of the super hard to remove beasts and the super value minions, mm -hmm. that's all still there. Yeah. You have the Unleash if you need it. You can even combo it with, uh, you know, Acid Maw if you really need to. <laughs> uh, well, no way. No, no I, way. Will, but, I will take a sub bet for that, Crip. I, I, would, I would actually consider subbing. All right. Yeah. So all it's right. one of those things where, you know, actually, it's a good point, though. They keep some of the really big, powerful uh, core cards with that. Um, but, you know, one, one thing to, to note, too, that we haven't really discussed was Web Spinner being... Um, taken out and uh, that's that's a pretty valuable one drop for well, mid-range hunter in fact that was probably the only one drop they used to run so what do you what do you replace that with you can replace it with three webs you can use ball of spiders ball of spiders <laughs> is not that bad it's not that bad <laughs> you're such a troll no ball of spiders yeah. is pretty good um you yeah. have to you have to kind of look at ball of spiders like you would sprint so you'd, you'd play Sprint, draw four cards, Ball of Spiders gives you three 1-1 one, one minions, which is like one card, and then you get like three more random cards out of that. It's, oh. it's kind of on that level. It's not really too unusual. We see King's Elec, which uh, is pretty descriptive of a mid-range hunter, because if, if it's a face hunter, you're not going to be winning any just, so you would never put that card in the deck. We see the Kodo. If we see Kodo, we probably see Tigers. Uh, what, what, what I'm basically getting at is I think the, the mid-range new school hunter with like Ram Wranglers is, is still fairly complete. And it happens to line up pretty decently if you're anticipating Druid, right? If you have yeah. those freezing traps. Uh, you know, Kalento has shown five unique cards and a few of them are not characteristic of what you would normally see. Crip, I, I have this weird sink, like suspicion that there might be something more to this hunter deck than me. You want to be like a Reno Jackson mid range hunter or something? Yeah, I don't know. It's just why we, we saw Stone Toast Boar that was put purposely mm. in this hunter deck, and Kalento <laughs> threw it back in his deck. So I, I'm, I'm really curious, man. I don't know what's happening exactly, but this Joust from the King's Elk might be able to tell us more. Mm hmm. Well, let's see if we ever see a, a duplicate card, because it, it might, in fact, be a Reno deck. Oh, ah, Doom Spider that's wins. a good one to get. Yeah. Usually, Any Reno decks are are noticed from their uh, wide variety of cards. So, And, you know, if you check 
the entire collection of Hearthstone, there's actually a good number of beasts these days. It's, they've added a lot over time. Um, not to mention that you can always get the... Oh, that's the second yep. Argent Squire. Never that mind. the second Argent Squire. Which yeah. happens to fill out the curve, by the way, which is very nice. Oh, my oh, God. Those are garbage. <laughs> Speaking of very nice, you would be, wish you would have a good card out of this. Just take the best uh, right. stats, I guess. Yeah, that's going to work because you're going to get another one from the next, uh, you know, Jeweled Scarab, and you're going to get Pirate Synergy. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any other three-mana Pirate, though, outside of the South Sea Captain? I don't think so. Mm, no. No, I don't think so either. Oh, Houndmaster. Wow. That's a great pickup there. Yeah, Houndmaster, especially after the Keeper's been used. So, a like, convenient way to remove. Uh, there is the Savage Combatant Coin Hero Power. Ooh, swipe, does that change? No, swipe. So I mean, I think the reason why Kalento went for face is because his board is still really good against swipe. Um, if, if you look at the, the swipe here, it, it still it just trades for the board. It doesn't do anything right. more than that. And I think for that reason, um, I may have liked to see the Savage Combatant. Do you oh, I see. He's, he's going to hero power to actually deal with the rest. Okay, well, that's a wasted coin because uh, Kodo's going to come down a little bit here. <laughs> yeah, the Kodo is pretty effective. The 3-5 is reasonable, but it doesn't die to the Emperor Thorson. I mean, how... Uh, see, this is now so... Now it does Houndmaster number two. <laughs> he's, even out of react. he's doing a... He's saying, wow? He's like, you know, okay. Bro. Like, and Clemson's kind of giggling because at this point, anything goes. A second Houndmaster... What? Okay, this is starting to get ridiculous. Yeah. I put Kodo in a lot of my like free-to-play accounts, uh, just whenever I have them. Uh, it, it's it's a very good card, and the only thing holding Kodo back is you know people playing all these like musters and haunted creepers. But in this format and in the old school format, Kodo is, is a stunning card. Um, is a lot of people are still going to play these these mid-game and early-game threats. And the Kodo is just such a huge tempo swing. And all these like junk minions that would otherwise be eaten by the Kodo's battle cry are, are not playable. Yeah, definitely. One of the most unexpected cards to come out yet in this tournament, but one of the most fun. Uh, you know, one of the really awkward things, too, is that you'd like to cycle this Wrath, but if you want it full clear very cleanly, you would play the Savage Combatant with it. Um, and as such... You do get initiative onto the board, but outside of this Aggro Drake and combo, you're you're gonna have to hope that you get some other good cards here. But it's not like Kalanto has real good answers to this Savage Combatant either. He has the potential Huffer. That's about it. Potential. Oh, you think it's guaranteed? That's a Huffer. You think you think that Huffer is free? <laughs> if it's not Huffer, it's gonna be like a Stone Tusk Boar from the. Uh... Uh, Tomb Spider. Spider. Interesting. So, which would you sequence first? Mm, well, in terms of playable charging beasts, there are quite few. This yeah. might can actually get pretty badly punished. Oh, even oh, more so now. Man, super actually, punished. No. Mm. Yeah, you you swipe first. face, right? Or and and hit this, hit this and swipe face. Then you put him down to 24. You... Um, I, you could try to swipe. push for combo damage next turn to end the game, right? That's also a possibility. I feel like that's also playing with fire, though, because if your opponent has a single kill command, <clears throat> then kills the Drake, kill commands the Savage Combatant, you lose your board, you're just left with spells. Yeah, or if he has two kill commands, you just outright die. <laughs> Oh that's yeah, also that's also a problem. possibility, the other end of it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, he did play a Jeweled Scarab, right? So that, that increases yeah. the chances of having those kinds of plays. I think I would trade here. I think I would throw the combatant in and swipe face. Oh, he blinks. Takes the, uh, you know, I guess the halfway mark here. Like, address the high main, but go face so that you can be aggressive. Injured Qualder. In the deck. Wait, okay. He That's has to be playing Camel. Desert Camel in this yeah. deck. There's just yeah. no way he's not. King's Elec. King Elec. Oh, how are you going to win a Joust with a card that's actually relevant? I don't think you can. 
you, you're just going to joust with the boar, the stone tusk boar at this point. I'm feeling it, Crip. Oh, and then and then your opponent has like teched in a wisp, and then you clear <laughs> the board. Yeah, yeah, or a target dummy. Yep. Uh, my X now wouldn't be too bad against Druid if you can stabilize, right? Mm hmm. It's a big if, but. He's this really point looking for a charge here. Yeah. That's, oh, that's the worst man. one. Uh, the worst he needed one. anything but that one. Yeah. Uh, hmm. uh, I think if he doesn't kill the Savage Combatant, he just dies. Yeah, I think he will, though. He knows Emperor Thorson's been used. Uh, it's also just more damage that's on there, and the swipe already has been also used, so go for what you can. All right, so this is combo plus six plus one. He has 21 damage here. One damage off. I don't think he can cycle into anything that gives him the lethal, so... No, but he can just clear the board here. It's just if you do that, um, can you really expect to win overall? I don't know. I mean, if the Azure Drake stays alive, I, th I think you can definitely get some pretty good damage in if you play a little bit of the clear game. Oh, but you can't, you can't uh, Wrath, Force, and play the, what? the Mountain Raptor. That's annoying. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying now. And then if, if Hunter has some way to take initiative back, you're you're like left top decking an answer with no clear way to mm -hmm. draw into a lethal. So a wrath first. If he's running out of time, he's gotta get moving. That's a good card. I think I would yeah. charge into the uh, into the face or uh, oh okay yeah I was gonna say Leoc, but yeah I guess you can attack and just play it in taunt mode. It gives you another turn, and now both minions need to die, which is pretty damn unlikely. Oh man, and with this dead South Sea Captain, what can Kalento draw right now? Oh. Well, you can draw it's that. not good enough, though. Is he dead, though? Oh, he didn't attack face, you're right, it's not 20 Yeah, he's not dead. Oh my god. And the South Sea Captain comes down! <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, but no surprises left, right? So with no surprises left, what is one card a hunter's gonna draw to stay alive? Uh, he already used both Houndmasters, too. Yeah. Houndmaster so, on my Exna is the dream. Five, Instead of like a... Seven, oh, five. Man. So, the most damage he could take is actually 12. With a kill command. What about quick shot? Oh, quick shot of the kill command. Oh. Quick shot dream. That's still lethal, by the way. Quick shot into kill command is still lethal here. Oh, man. With a hero power. But he still has cards like Stone Tusk Boar in his deck. Desert Camel? Um, There's no backfire one drops, right? There's just no Stone one drops. Tusk Boar! Um, actually, I think... <laughs> that card has appeared so many times in I believe, the I game. I believe he's, he stays alive uh, with a zombie chow. Oh, you're right! There's the possibility of zombie chat, but you know what? You at this stage, mm -hmm. you have to assume that he doesn't necessarily have combo, and you have to just go for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he does have combo, and that does give Saviz a win for his Druid deck. But um, oh, I mean, oh. we we always expected Druid to get a pretty easy win in this format. So does that really mean much? Does does this Hunter deck actually have potential? Um, the one card that we haven't seen that I'm a bit that I'm a bit disappointed is Ram Wrangler. I'm really hoping that card is in there because that that is a card that is just like, you know, one one third of the time when you play it, it's just free win, right? Like if if you get any legendary beast or um, or like a high main, it's, it's just GG. There's just no stopping you. I, I think there's a possibility because you have the turn five play the Stampeding Kodo and just surprise them. Uh, and then you have the turn six Stone Tusk Boar with the Ram Wrangler. <laughs> okay. It's it's not even a possibility. It might be a reality. But we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, shift gears here. Kalento just switches to Druid. He's like, okay, time to get a little bit more serious here.
Mm -hmm. um, so the, the Hunter deck is so fascinating because we don't know exactly what's coming out from him. In the meantime, Savita's is playing a pretty traditional lineup here. The Priest, he's just going to save for last to give it most chances to win. Meanwhile, he's got this Aggro Shaman, which has been also a pretty decent deck for runner-up spot in the most dominant, uh, dominant decks in this tournament. All right, so what do we got here? Do you just double one drop, or do you uh, throw out the juggler and hope he doesn't get wrathed or uh, living rooted? Ooh, looks like the optimistic play. I don't believe the optimistic play will work here. Oh, it will! Wild growth, wow. That's a snap yeah, he wants wild to keep growth. her the grove next turn. Mm -hmm. Well, if you wrath, you, you still have the, the raptor and then the keeper. It's not really that big of a deal, I feel. Hunter, hero power, steady shot, that's going to be very devastating. <laughs> this thralls like you hunt alone, do you? <laughs> well, Let me case, show you how to play Hunter. I, it, it, just, it just goes to show you how full circle it is, right? The yeah. biggest threat to a lot of shaman safety back in the early days of Hearthstone was the Hunter hero power, because you couldn't really heal. Uh, this was before even heal bot and healing wave came to existence, and now the Shaman has become the Sporg. I think I like the, um... Mm, I should do. One thing, because I, I kind of lack experience playing this Shaman deck, would you ever consider a Rock Biter your 1-3 to kill the Keeper here, just to maintain the board? Abusive is kind of like the same thing, and you, ke you keep a 1-3, which is more reliable in terms of the stats, so... I'd be okay with just using the hero power. Yeah, that's what you end up using. Uh, I think you want to go for the man efficiency. It's clear your hand is not really saying that it can give you the 20 plus damage over the course of two turns. Oh, sorry, uh, of the next couple of turns. Um, so there's no like two turn lethal you can start setting up in the mm -hmm. next one. So uh, I, I would say start using your hero power as much as you can. What about this Wrath? Is Wrath worth using to gain one HP? What? The cycle. Uh, yeah, it might even be more valuable to try to get closer to your other minions that can be bigger impact. Um, I mean, how, what's what's really what you're going to keep Wrath for? I, like, it doesn't even kill Totem Golems. I guess you could pick off a Tunnel Trog in the distance. Yeah, it's for Tunnel Trog or, um, or another Juggler, I guess. Oh, oh that Innervate's very nice. It lets him uh, Hero Power still. Or Wrath, again, same issue. for no one. I'd probably I think, rat. I think I'd hero power. Yeah, let's see. Hero power. Oh, it looks like a hero power to me. Wow. There we go. Clanto is so liberal with his health pool. Uh, and you know that it's one of his hunter hero power. I don't know. This is probably, this is really scary for any player to just start dipping in the teens. Ah, uh, it's 19. That's not even a teen. That's fully legal, dude. Fully legal. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, you know, you're, you're technically correct. <laughs> they are old enough to be an adult. All right. Hmm. What to do? What do you even do? You just lava burst the Drake and go uh, to the face, or would you? I think you lava burst the Drake because if you don't lava burst the Drake, there's no there's no chance your tunnel trog pushes for damage, right? Zero chance. That's true, but it's already kind of a low chance this stage into the game. Tunnel trog seems more of like. A, a small void walker than anything else. Like it's just like a big taunt me that needs to die immediately. Mm-hmm. little time. Well, so maybe you'd consider using Rock Fighter instead. A Rock Fighter on the Drake and hero power. I kind of like that. The thing about Lava Burst too is that if you if you pick up Doomhammer next turn, you can't play it, and that's something that you always have to be considering. Face Lava Burst. Okay, now that's something I can get behind if you're trying to win the game very soon. I mean, he's got five bursts in the hand. Maybe he can piece together something. Oh, he's technically got seven because he can't hero power while using his hand. Right, right. Well, he's also overloaded, so he can't do it next turn, but... Yeah, he can. It's Flame Shock. Flava Shock. Oh, it's a... F oh, I don't... Oh, yeah, you're right. Lava uh, Shock. Let's Lava Shock first. Well, yeah, there's there's uh, no we'll way see. he's keeping this Trog. There's just no way. It's not Keepsies. Swipe and then you like swipe. I kind of like Wrath uh, Mounted Raptor. If you swipe, you can't play anything. I don't like swipe too much, even though it's clunky. You have two of them, so they just kind of rot in your hand. 
Now 13, that's a pretty low team that I'm not too comfortable at. Oh yeah? Yeah. So, some people might disagree with you, Crip, but <laughs> those people don't have many rights in society. Yeah. Lava Shock, yep, so the 7 comes out here. Uh, he can also develop the Totem Golem, but it gets eaten up directly by the Azure it, it does nothing. Scary stuff. Clunto is going the wrong way past the half point or past the third left of his life. He's got to find something to heal or taunt. Well, he's not dead yet. Um, there's there's still a, a little bit of play here, uh, and the hero power makes makes a really big difference. So the the druid just has the hero power every single turn, and hope he draws just enough burst. Then he's almost there. He really is almost there. Oh, I was so scared for a doom hammer right now, just to like end the game. Yeah. <laughs> Usually that's exactly what happens. Like, oh, right on time. Now, six, it's something to consider mana too. Pyro is, um, how much damage can your opponent do with nine on the board? A potential savage roar is eighteen damage, so I guess you feel somewhat. I mean, it's also the case where it's like, how much are you going to play defensive versus play aggressive? Well, he has he has two draws for a savage roar. We have to keep that in mind as well. He can he can wrath for one, and I think I think Calento is going to have to make this play. He's going to have to go for a savage roar draw to end the game. Oh, oh my god, there it is. <laughs> and it's not just the savage roar; it's also the force of nature. And you know what? It it's okay because Savish just did this to Calento the previous game. And you know what? Basically, the way the series started was both Druid decks won. So now the best of three begins, Crip. Yep. What a surprise. Well, the Spice is the one who has the edge, I think, because he got a no. lot of information on Kalento's. Uh, no, I, I think it totally cards. doesn't. I think the uh, I think the Rogue is, is going to do pretty well against a Shaman and a Priest. And I feel like the mid-range Hunter can grab a win off that Shaman. I think Shaman is just slow enough, and the Hunter is like just tricky enough that it'll work. But I think the Hunter lost one of its biggest advantages, which is the surprise factor. Mm. Um, so Vitz will be keeping in mind things like the Stampede and Kodo and, and other things, shenanigans. All right. Well, well this is uh, basically the Hunter Mirror. The, the closest thing we have to a Hunter Mirror in the tournament. <laughs> I like your style. All right. Who do you who do you give it to? You give it to the Shaman here. Yeah, Shaman's the clear, uh, more aggressive deck because mm -hmm. the Hunter is more of a it's a mid range setup. You try to set your minions with an early curve, and then you follow it up with leveraging the board um, to to push for the win. Versus this deck is just trying to end the game as quickly as possible. The the couple of wild factors is. Um, whether or not Kalento has comeback mechanics like knife jugglers, so if he gets like Unleash the Hounds with that, that could be one way to dominate the board. Uh, but I also anticipate that Kalento has a couple of more tricks up his sleeve that we're not expecting, Crib. So I, I'm, I'm holding out for oh, Argus. potential. It's a lot of taunts, actually. Yeah, that, that the Houndmaster. It's got the occasional Misha. Hmm. Well, uh, life tap is not necessarily conducive to your plan against Hunter, but uh, you do have some other good options: fire blast and shape shift. The thing about life tap, yeah, though, is shape you a lot of his cards. Oh, he does go to life tap. I, have a, I, have, I like this the shape shift aspect. I hadn't really uh, seen it uh, work as well as it has until this tournament with the Doom Hammer. And well, there's a the deadly shot. I'm gonna see an unleash here. I think he's gonna burn the divine shield just to have uh, an extra minion on the board. It's not going to do him much good as the, uh, the Feral Spirit is going to shut down a lot of this action. A deadly shot! Crip! Uh, we, we see a deadly shot in the Hunter deck, and it's 2016. This is a card that saw a little bit of play two years ago. Mm -hmm. There it is, the Desert Camel. He's scared because he knows he can pull a pretty good one-drop from your opponent, Tunnel Drog. Well, at least, at least it's not Leoc. All right, Lava Shock. It's pretty poor. Yeah, you already have a Lava Shock, and your Lava Shock only opens up you to play the Tone Trog, which floats in mana. No, you could tap. 
could you just could life tap. Is that too bad? A lot of shots. So life tap and he's gonna tell Tron, Okay. Well, the double face is gonna work pretty well here. Is the he the trades. Oh, he's playing around Houndmaster because he knows. Ooh. Okay. See, that's okay. what the information I think does mm -hmm. help you. Oh, the Kvalder Raider. Uh, no, no, injured Kvalder. Injured Kvalder. Oh. <laughs> it's it, the Kvalder Raider. <laughs> you would have loved for that to be like a one man Kvalder Raider. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> the Desert Camel can't pull the Kvaldi, uh right now, though. That's kind of it's kind of unfortunate. That's the, like that. That's like the dream, right? Isn't that the reason why you play the Desert Camel so you can do that kind of stuff? Yeah, and it does work reasonably well. <laughs> okay, oh, this could backfire up. hard. Oh Stop God! Tusk boar. That's a backfire. This is looking really bad for the hunter. Oh, it doesn't have any overload though. Yet. Oh, oh it doesn't have any overload though. <laughs> Uh, you know, defender onto the camel. When I look at it, actually can be pretty impactful. Mhm. Mm but I think uh, Saviz is in a clearing mood right now, especially with the warlock hero power. The more control he, he can assess, the more advantage he can accumulate. Mhm. Mm Plus the trogs. Uh, trogs are very explosive. You don't have to worry too much because the the damage that you draw from it. Are very high. Like it, it continues to amplify itself over turns. Well, uh -oh. that's an Argus play. Uh oh. My shield for Argus. What about deadly shot? Argus is better. <laughs> Argus is because he needs to land it onto the uh, the high main. I think that's his only chance to win. Mm -hmm. High main and defender of Argus. Oh, oh God. one man off. The cavalry here. Is that is that like potential lethal, next, lethal turn. next turn? It is 100 percent lethal next turn. Wow! And so Clunto's like, gonna play the high. I main. think it's two over. Yeah, that's it. Shaman's gonna take it. Yep. And again, this uh, <laughs> this hunter deck not really working out. He's gonna really have to bully the priest. I mean, the hunter against priest is not exactly a guaranteed matchup either. Priest has gotten more tools since League of Explorers. I'm looking at him too. Be one of the big things that really shuts down a high man. One of Hunter's best cards here. And Kalento's liability could be this Hunter deck. The more I'm looking at it, the more it's like. It's really cool. But it's also rather ineffective at the moment. So. What I'm thinking is there might not necessarily be in Tomb. Honestly, the most successful priest deck yesterday was Tice's. And he didn't have in Tomb. I think his is the most successful because it had the most healing and pyromancers. Now the issue is that pyromancer might also completely destroy the hunter deck. Um, but we really have to see what flavor of priest Saviz is bringing to the table before we can really judge this. Because um, even if it has in tomb, it could just overall be too slow. Um, most of the priests, I think all the priests that we've seen so far are reliant on getting that big bodied, usually taunted dragon. And Kalento is running two hunters marks, so I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this uh, we've seen the hunter deck play the twice, shall bring victory. and I still can't assess it properly. A new flavor of priest. Here we go. Akanai Soul Priest Circle Heal combos. Now, whenever you're running this, you're almost always going to be running Pyromancer. But we also see that it's a dragon deck as well. So, can you really fit that in? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, it's a really good question. Uh, maybe he only runs one. <laughs> Could be like a tech. And he does have the Entomb. Uh, so it, it's definitely already flavored much differently than the G2 guys. And with that Alcani Soul Priest draw, I'm inclined to believe that he runs two Alcani's. Mm -hmm. Which makes me think that he might even cut the top end from the deck. Like, maybe he doesn't have Ysera oh, and any Chill Maw. Uh, maybe he has like a least star seeker and other cards like that. We've been seeing more of that and less of like the late game dragons because it gives more consistency to early game board plays and mm -hmm. it still gives you late game control options. So that is a possibility. 
Now, you mentioned uh, that Elise is going to be in this deck and it's going to be in that deck, but we haven't seen a single iteration of that deck. <laughs> You're still hopeful, I guess. Did we see an Elise Star Seeker in any deck, though? I don't think so. I think so. we see, saw one. No. I feel like we did, but maybe I'm wrong. I could be mistaken here. Uh, Klanto looking for three mana options. Where's all the good three mana cards off the Scarab? We've seen yeah. zero good ones. Yeah, a lot of time you're looking for uh, Iwa Horn Bow or something like that. Go wow, Command. Oh. Animal Companion. Yeah, Animal Companion, Kill Command, like you said. Uh, you know, even Deadly Shot sometimes is pretty okay. It's Whoa! Just like, but... This could be draw your deck scenario here. Two circles of healing, two Auchanized, so that means he has to cut... Maybe he... It's because you cut things like Valence Chosen in the Dragon Priest, so he might have immediately thought, all right, I want some more access to AoE. I don't have Light Bombs. Two Light Bombs are gone, two Valence Chosen are gone. I'm just going to replace it with two Auchanized and two circles. That could realistically be the thing, and then ultimately the deck stays the same. Acid Maw, you brought this up earlier. Yes! The possibility... Wow. No, no he's got the Houndmaster with the, the web spinner playing. It. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we do here? Oh, you really want to keep this Pyromancer. It's so important. It is, but I'm, I think the threat of a beast is even higher, so I, I'd be willing to trade the Pyromancer here. You also have the Akenai Soul Priest. And you also have information that your opponent's playing a mid-range centric deck, so he's going to ramp up into bigger threats. The one thing that I am afraid of is a Stampeding Kodo right around now, because then it's just going to kill the Cleric. But there's, I don't think there's a way to play around it. I mm. Embrace the void. Okay, well, I guess he's sacrificing the Pyromancer to try to establish the border of the Akanai, seeing as the Akanai can be even more dangerous. But I really like the Pyromancer. Yeah, but the Pyromancer didn't combo with many things in the hand either. The circle is is for like if there's a bunch of one health minions, and to be fair, there are one health minions in the deck. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also like, what if you play Cavaldi right? Like, not start the Cavaldi right here. Uh, the injured Cavaldi. It's like that kind of card doesn't really get oh. impacted at all by it. So yeah. I think the Pyromancer trade was okay. Sure, Pyromancer might be a card you can expect in this Hunter deck with double Hunter's Mark. That used to be a thing. If you're playing a control style Hunter, yeah, it's one of the best tools for removal. These days, though, hard one to say. One of the best cards with that combination of cards was um, Keltuzad. You play Pyromancer and like Hunter's Mark, Hunter's Mark, and just sacrifice all your board, then KT, easy game. Oh, 10 mana wombo combo. That that's just pretty good. Oh man, tomb right on curve. This is not going well at all. And this hunter deck no. is getting steamrolled. It really is. I mean, he's he's dropped the board completely to a priest. <laughs> By like turn five, turn six, like priest is being able to commandingly seize it. All right. Well, it might start to go the other direction here, as the priest doesn't have uh, any. Okay, now it does. Oh, a nice draw. That's pretty big. Would you consider playing the Twilight Wall before the Azure Drake? Oh, he's wow. gonna play the Wormrest Agent instead. It's a uh, pretty poor mana saturation, though. You can't even heal. I mean, you just spent seven mana on uh, four seven worth of minion. It's, I get it. He's he's trying yeah. to get all his dragon synergies out of the way, so he's not dependent on it. Mm -hmm. But I'd be like definitely afraid of some Kodo shenanigans. Doesn't really. It's not really impactful in this case. Well, oh, offer's not bad either. You have a pair of five threes to trade I really well into the board. I think we're gonna see. Oh, do you think it's gonna be Argus? Yeah, I think you're right. I think Argus is maybe better here. Argus just gives you really good trades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm in I'm in for the Argus play, but it looks like uh, Kalento's going with the Unleash. You're weak to Holy Nova either way, so it's not like you can play around that. Like either, right. Yeah. You know. I also like if okay if you use Unleash, he's going to use Quick Shot. I kind of like saving Quick Shot as well. Okay. 
Okay, that's fair. I mean, this also keeps a fair amount of power on the board, and you get a full clear. I think the problem with the Argus is that it didn't clear everything. Mm-hmm. Mm. Armor station. Part. Two four taunt. Two Still four. super annoying in even this format. Now, would you play a 2-1 on this board? No, I don't think you would. I think the holding the dragon synergy is more important than playing a 2-1. Wow, well, it's important that Salento played the quick shot then. He draw the <laughs> second one. That's right. Uh, I don't know if... I guess you could use a quick shot now in an Argus and then just push. It's clear your opponent doesn't have, like, Holy Nova. You would have... Most likely play the Wormrest Agent and Holy Nova instead of. Uh, you would the quick shot an Argus? I think you have to quick shot and Beast. Uh, quick shot and Beast also is a possibility, too. You, 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 that's a pretty good observation. I was thinking just because Argus hits multiple targets and now is the it's time. Still going to. It, but yeah, quick shot and the Beast also is pretty good now that uh, you pointed it out. Quickly. Too bad you can't beast an Argus. That would be the, that would be the play. Yeah, that'd be so crazy. Clear I don't board. think you taunt the beast though, but I think uh, clearing the board and saving the quick shot for next turn would be very good. Okay. Okay. I guess he's not doing the quick shot. This is instant GG versus Holy Nova, by the way. Still possibility power with shield. No Pyromancer though. Shadow or Death also is probably in the deck. No! He's wow. got the flash heals with the Arcanai for it's the crazy Arcanai here. first heals and damage. These are very poor draws. Um, if Saviz like, blanks out again next turn, I think he's gonna lose. <laughs> yeah, and the big problem is that these are all just combo pieces. Things that synergize with other cards. Animal Companion could be pretty devastating here. Mm. It also Too fits bad. the mana usage for Defender of Argus and the yeah. Quick Shot. It's just too bad well. you don't get to choose where you want to place it. Oh, the Animal Companion, you mean? Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, what do we do here? You really don't have to play the Quick Shot this turn. It's not necessary. I wonder. My shield. Get more mileage out of the hero power. He's gonna trade two dogs into it. Okay. And you know, deadly shot is also pretty effective as well. Uh, crit. We may have said uh, we might have set the the, the 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 tone too early with you know saying that the hunter might be the, the liability. It looks like it might take a win. Not yet. Not yet. Well, it takes the Let dog, but mind. the dog can't like really do anything. It just stays there as a taunt, and yeah. Hunter can draw game-ending damage if Savitz doesn't heal here. Does Savitz feel like he has to use his flash heals? Um, I think he has to... Um, he's got to get as much mileage as he can out of his hero power. So I don't really blame him for this. It's a bit greedy, but I think I would have done exactly the same thing. Just oh, here we go. Command. Moment of truth. No, he needs anything. Any, just two damage. There we go. Two damage. Done. Game over. Easy there game. The two damage to get past the taunt. Kalento has snuck a win. He can even go for the deadly shot BM, which I would love to see. Do it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Looks like we have a tied game on our hands. It is going to be two and two. It's going to go to the final game. And uh, this priest deck actually, I think, has uh, has some very low confidence for me. I mean, I I don't I don't see that that this will beat very many decks if it struggles to get a good opener, and especially against the rogue. Like, it, I think this priest deck can beat anything, but I think the consistency is very poor, and I think rogue being so disruptive with tempo and all these mechanics is probably going to give you a hard time in terms of allowing you to combo. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, the thing about a lot of these Priest decks is that if you just have pieces that don't necessarily have individual value, if you can play them on your proactive turn or even have immediate use for it, they're stuck in your hand. And things like Flash Heals, 
you know, while pretty good against aggro with things like Pyromancer and whatnot, I, I feels like Savitas like half of the control priest, half of the dragon priest. And last game he was a victim of drawing the awkward size of both. He had like cards that could be played, but he needed dragons and he didn't have dragons. Instead he had control cards and so forth. Man. Well, in this case he's uh he's also sporting some uh Napkins. I mean, these these cards are not going to do anything immediately. Napkins? Is that a term for like useless cards? Yeah. Mm. Well, that's, that's not bad. Awesome. That, yeah, that's pretty good. That's going to challenge uh, almost every play from the rogue, and um, maybe he can actually draw into good cards with this North Shore now. I think Rogue still isn't under any pressure to have to rush and kill this minion because Valen's Chosen doesn't exist anymore in this format. Right. So I think you can just hero power pass. Before in the past, one of the things that you debate is if I if I don't kill this now, will I get punished for it? Uh, and I don't think there's any buff minion that you're really afraid of in Breeze. Maybe Powered Shield, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, like, more it really combos! Is half control priest. <laughs> Half dragon priest. It's a pretty yeah. interesting take. Um, can you remove this? Murder. That's the question. Mm. As low? Let's see. Yeah. I think you have to wait one turn. I think you have to. You could do it this turn, but you waste the coin. You'd have to uh, Thalnos backstab the 2-4 hero power into it, coin eviscerate. Or next turn, just do that without the coin. And then the turn after that, coin the uh, the Emperor. You still have the 5 damage. Um, it's just because he has a Northshire, you're going to be giving up a card. So it's a pretty tough play to make. I'm trying to think if there's any merit to just playing a minion this turn. So that way you don't lose too much tempo on the board. Um, but uh, all these like individual small minions are pretty valuable for how they're comboed, right? The Thanos right. gets spell power, the SI gets that damage, and you don't want to play a 2-2 two -two Van Cleef, but I don't know if Clunto feels comfortable passing. It is Priest on the other hand, so like, are you really afraid of playing it that slow? Mm -hmm. By the way, Clunto has Emperor Thorson uh, in, his, in his deck, which may lead me to believe that Clunto might even have some other shenanigans like Mally Ghost in the deck. All right, well, Clunto roped out, um, and I think that was intentional. I think that was the passive play that uh, I was suggesting. Well, maybe. Uh, usually you don't really rope out intentionally. You just kind of end it right beforehand, because if you rope, you Ooh. give yourself less time to think with the... Combos are starting. Press. Yeah, the combo is working. And oh, he has to play something or he's going to rope out again? Oh. Yeah, this is what I was saying. I don't think the rope was intentional. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And, I mean, Kalento has a pretty good hand, too, given what he wants. So I guess we're just going to keep playing until we get some uh, message about what happened. I, I look like Kalento disconnected. I mean, we don't even have his webcam, for crying out loud. Uh, maybe something happened, too. Maybe Clento happened to be living in the same building as Tice, who had a similar problem yesterday. Uh, apparently, internet went out in his entire city of Enskada, which is where Tice lives. The entire Those city internet trolls internet. turning off the power of entire cities to drop tournaments. <laughs> Man, they've really leveled up their game. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think uh, I think I was an honest DC. And I think in this, uh, oh uh, well, it, even if it's an honest okay. DC, uh, we are going to give Savits the win. The game did play out past uh, a couple of turns here, and it is it is looks like one of those scenarios where Priest did have a chance against the Rogue. Normally, this match is pretty awful, so yeah, it'd be pretty hard to like turn back the clock immediately. Uh, we're, we're gonna right. we're gonna wait to see if Savits finishes out this game, but uh, nope, the game's gonna decide for us. So with that, Savits advances three oh, two. Oh, 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 oh. Got to figure out his internet problems. So it looks like <laughs> the internet 
failed b- uh, before the hunter did. So <laughs> that's, that's right. definitely another mark against Kalento this tournament, apparently. Yeah, but again, guys, he does he does have his chance. Uh, Kalento will be playing the loser of the first match, which was Firebat. Uh, well. One of the very aggressive players will stay in the tournament, and we'll get to see them play out a little bit later and perhaps advance to tomorrow's finals. Uh, coming up, though, we will have Oskaka versus Super JJ. Um, I haven't seen too much of these players since uh, you know the World Championships last year, so I'm kind of uh, eager to see what kind of creations they're going to bring to this wild format. That's going to be coming up in just a few minutes. You mean to the standard format, Crip? Yes. Ha-ha. <laughs> Guys, a big shout out to Geek Fuel as well as uh, Hearthbone and the Curse Network. Thanks so much for tuning in. When we come back, more action here at the Curse Trials presented by Team Archon. It's, it's going to be Alskaka versus Super JJ.